Hi, and welcome to another edition of Seniors Today. I'm your host, Tom Barty, and our guest today is Mr. Stefan Betts, who is the uh, principal at Walnut Creek Consulting. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So um, you, have a, you have a very um, distinguished past. I hope in, so. In the healthcare industry or health services industry. And I know previously you worked with Solano County and Sonoma County uh, in health and human services and um, sort of an expert in that area. And that's me saying it, not, of course, not you saying it. But um, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, senior longevity mm -hmm. and um, some opportunities for seniors to deal with long-term care and then maybe a little bit about CBO's com community-based organizations. So um, to get started, um, you were talking a little bit about uh, the unique feature of, of regions in throughout the world actually where people seem to live longer. Yeah. And you know there, there must be reasons for that or at least assumptions on why that, that occurs. Maybe we could get started there. Yeah. So um, you're right. Uh, I was health service director in Sonoma County uh, for a while, and in Sonoma County, we wondered how healthy we were living. You know, the wine is there, so is that a detriment to our health, or is that it's an advantage? Of we don't know. We right? got to figure it out. That's yeah. right. So we wanted to measure it, uh, and there's a guy uh, who actually works for National Geographic, who measures. Uh, longevity and happiness among seniors and uh, he came to Sonoma County and we sort of did a checklist and he calls those areas where there's high longevity blue zones as in the sky's blue there's no limit mm -hmm. um, and uh, he found some in Italy some in Japan <coughs> some in uh, California Southern California um, and then he worked with Oregon and um, Minnesota later on. And um, basically what we found in Sonoma County was that we were uh, a blue zone um, sort of at the 80% level, pretty high up there. And my idea for Vallejo is to become a blue zone, create your own blue zone. And um, there's, a, there's, a, there's an activities list. So. Just before we started the show, I was talking to Sherry outside about the July 4th celebration at the waterfront, the Matt Hatter celebration. And the Matt Hatter celebration, that you can use that as a blueprint for your checklist. Um, one, you want to have a community feel. You want to have something that's healthy. And you want to have family cohesion and entertainment. So seniors who are integrated into the family and in the, into the community live a longer life. You want to have good food. Um, so I'm thinking about hot dogs. Yeah, no. Maybe on a July 4th, but not all the time, not every day. Uh, more beans, as you know, as our grandma said, beans and vegetables, eat them. Um, and then the last, but not least, is to have a purpose in life. So uh, as we're aging, um, we are looking forward to something, and not the end of life, but a purpose on that end stage that is suddenly blooming. And we have now research that shows that for a lo lot of folks who are retired, their happiness blooms. You know, they have less uh, risk with the family, they have more opportunities, they have more freedom, less work, but more work that they want to do, not necessarily have to do. And so we've seen that um, there are communities out there where the seniors are integrated in a way that they are more happy. And because of that, they are um, they're contributing more happiness to the overall community as well. Mm -hmm. So um, that that feeling of well-being and feeling of happiness can be contagious, in other words, in a community. Yeah. Yes, it can be contagious amongst <coughs> generations. So if I have um, seniors who are 
happy, healthy, and active, um, they will meet and uh, commune with kids who learn from them. They will take care of the grandkids who learn from them. Um, they will be out there in the, um, in, in the uh, community events to uh, provide their, their knowledge, their wisdom. They have a lot of it. And what I've learned when I talk to seniors, and I was aging director for a while in Solano County, so I talked to a lot of seniors, actually, um, is that the, the history of our country is written not in the history books, and it's not written in the politics that we see. What I learn is the history that is written by people who've lived it. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's such a rich um, culture that we can glean from seniors that um, we should learn from and, and uh, sit down with them, listen to their life stories, and then use that material and that wisdom to, um, to form our own lives. And that's especially important for, you know, for instance, my kids who are 20, 30 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, so in your time with um, Solano County, I know that you were involved with the centenarian celebrations. And so um, I think uh, there was something like 200, 250 people in the county out of 400,000. Yes. Yeah. They were over 100 years old. Yeah. And so invitations went out to all of them, and we ended up with about 15 each year that we did it. And one of the questions that was asked was, what is your secret to longevity? And you get all kinds of stuff. Some, some guy says, yeah, I take a shot of brandy every day. Somebody, one lady up in Napa, where they also do it, said that, um, thought about it for a minute, and then said, well, I, I just wake up every day. <laughs> so, you know, everybody has a different way of looking at it. But the one that struck me was, um, a number of them said, laughter. And just uh, that, that side of your life where you're, you're happy and you're positive. Um, and that kind of goes along with what you said about the interaction of seniors um, with the community and, and that, that that's a positive, positive experience. So uh, my question was um, of the, the community side, of the diet side, uh, you didn't really specifically say exercise, but you said to be remain active, and um, um, the the laughter. <clears throat> which one proved in your studies to be the most important component? Was it attitude, or was it diet, or you know, did anything stand out? That's the interesting part. So you take one of the ingredients out of the soup, and you get stone cold soup, <laughs> meaning uh -huh. there's, n th th there's something you missing, and because something is missing out of the out of the cohesive uh, experience of life, you actually don't go to long longevity. So take any one of those ingredients out of the mixture, and you don't have a blue zone. So. The, the secret to a blue zone is to have all those parts and live them, not just have them there as a policy, not, them, not have them there in, on paper or as an idea, but you said attitude, to have the attitude that I'm going to live this today. And you mentioned exercise. So for instance, the, a lot of the blue zones have walkable communities. Um, a lot of the blue zones have gardens. Um, community gardens, not necessarily your individual gardens, but community gardens where people come together and they, um, they um, make sure that, they are, that the vegetables grow together and they share them. Um, and then that fosters the social life, the, the, you know, the, that interaction. So for instance, my wife um, uh, got together with a women's group where we live nearby Vallejo, and the kids, and then she got together because the kids needed to have some help. Um, they were all in preschool. And the, the women still know each other 20 years later, right? They still get together 20 years later. The mm. kids still get together 20 years later. The grandparents still get together 20 years later, 
just was a, a, at a graduation party of one of the kids um, two weeks ago, and all the generations were there. And <clears throat> one um, ingredient of a blue zone is to have um, lifelong friendships and relationships that are local. So I have great relationships with folks on Facebook who um, who live in Germany and in Australia and mm. Japan. Uh, but the, the secret sauce to longevity and to happiness is have a relationship where you live, have it long term and um, visit your friends. So my son just graduated from, my oldest son just graduated from UCSF and he um, is seeing his high school friends whom he's known uh, since eighth grade um, every second week. I mean, that, it's that... Keep the connection. That connected. Yeah. Um, so to get one of the ingredients and take it out, the whole thing comes faltering down. But keep the ingredients alive and actually live them and uh, you know you 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 have that happiness ingredient in your day, and then the next day it's, it gets a little bit more, and the next day it gets a little bit more. Uh, so that's pre a pretty astounding experience to know that at the end of my life I'm I have this opportunity to be the happiest I've ever been. Well, that's very cool. I'm hoping that I'm heading that direction too. <laughs> um, you know, I had a. Um, I, own, I own some property and I had a tenant um, who used to play in the uh, Negro Baseball League hmm. and I was at his house one day and he showed me um, a box score from 1954 where it had his name and he had, um, he was at bat four times, had, had two hits and scored three runs. Oh, awesome. And um, he was so proud of that. Um, and he said he played until he was 60 with kids in their 20s. And wow. the, this guy was 99 years old and he's still driving and, you know, still going to the store and it was pretty amazing. Um, but it, it was an inspiration to be around him because he had such a positive attitude about life. One of the other things I noticed too is he, he, he was constantly chewing gum. And he had some of the best teeth I've ever seen. <laughs> so uh, I think that was another one of his uh, personal secrets. But uh, it's so amazing to see somebody that has the balance in their life. Yeah. And the blue zone in yeah. their life. Yeah. So the, the, the important thing about most of these seniors that were centenarians also was that most of them were still pretty mobile. Mm -hmm. And are able to get around and... Um, for those that don't, and and this could happen to somebody in their late in their fifties, sixties, seventies, um, sometimes they need to go uh, to a place where they have assisted living or whatever it is, and they need long-term care. So recently, I was looking at the cost of that, and you know, as it turns out most people start paying for that when they're in their thirties and forties when it's cheap. But if you're when you're my age and you look at it, oh my God, you know the premium is a couple thousand a month. Mm -hmm. But you th you look at it also. If you have to go to long term care now, depending on what you need, it can be seven thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So they do. There is insurance out there that you can get for that, right? Yes. And how does that work? Okay, so long term care yeah. is. Um, interesting subject. Um, the, the reason why we are able to live long is because we have supports, right? So nobody is able to live on their own in the wilderness until they're 99. You, you have to have some kind of support to reach that age. Uh, and so Rather than seeing old age as a declining uh, set of activities, we should think of reaching old age as a set of activities where we are more and more dependent on others, but also able to depend on others. 
I've seen as an agency director, most of the, the difficulties we had in helping seniors were uh, the seniors not willing to be helped and refusing help when um, other people were around them and interested in, in supporting them. So the, 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 the one part coming out of family cohesion is that family is a very important part of a senior's life at the end um, of their, th their lifespan. And it can be very um, uh, gratifying to, for the younger generations to support the older generation. Uh, for instance, my aunt um, passed away of Lou Gehrig's disease, but she had Lou Gehrig's disease for about two and a half years. And I was fortunate enough to support her through that. Um, and, and it formed me and it, and it gave me strength. Um, so long-term care ha has phases. We have a preconceived idea that long-term care means a skilled nursing facility or assisted living. That is not true. Mm -hmm. Long-term care is predicated on the idea that there's a set of daily activities that we have to do to, to live, right? We have to bathe, we have to eat, we have to walk, we have to get around. And there's a set of daily activities. If we can't do them, then somebody has to help us with that. It can be a family member or it can be a paid person. So the idea of long-term care is actually to stay in your home as much and as long as possible maintain that lifestyle as much as you can. And there's insurance to provide for in-home care and to provide for those supported activities. And yes, the earlier you start paying into it, the better it is for your premium. <clears throat> but you can also uh, make, do the math and pay a $1,000 per month premium um, knowing that you may have to pay $90,000 per year for two or three years of your life at the end of your life when you're in, uh, when you're in a skilled nursing facility or in an assisted living center. Mm. So yes, the, the, the premiums are very high, but still um, the idea to pay into long-term care is, uh, is an important one, no matter the premium. However, what I've seen oftentimes is sort of the, the, the shotgun approach with long-term care. Um, everybody has their own set of genes, their own set of ailments, their own set of abilities. So it's best to sit down with um, a, a professional and figure out what kinds of ailments are going to, um, are going to turn up in my um, last year of my life, the second last year, the third last year, and so we'll then go back from that. Mm -hmm. um, based on my genes, um, and as you know, 23andMe and uh, um, reports like that are able to call out those traits. Um, and, and then there's, of course, lifestyle. And, and the state of California is rather advanced of um, providing support and advice um, there's the Health Insurance Advocacy Program of California, HICAP. Um, the, uh, uh, on, on the website of the Department of Healthcare Services, um, dhcas.gov. Uh, and anybody who's interested in long-term care can go there, call up and say, okay, um, I need some advice and um, get some free advice and by law, um, anybody who buys long-term care insurance must be advised that that's available. And everybody who thinks about buying long-term care insurance should l talk to folks at HICAP and, and lay out everything they know about their lifestyle and then choose the right long-term care insurance. So you can buy long-term care insurance just for daily activities, and, you know, focus on that and uh, less focus on skilled nursing facility. Or you can do the opposite. You think, now I will be able to maintain my lifestyle mm -hmm. with my family because I know I'm going to live with my family. But then there will be the, the time mm -hmm. when I need some 24-7 support. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I have um, a history of Alzheimer's in my family. And so I should ex expect 
and um, to, to be affected by Alzheimer's um, disorder when I get older. And, and at that point, I have to uh, be in a skilled nursing facility for sure. So uh, it's more a matter of going in, eyes wide open, and, and, and facing the realities of getting older and planning for it um, rather than um, just waiting until it happens. If you wait until it happens, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. Well, that sounds like good advice. Are, now, where do you get that advice? The state of California. Guess, uh, guess what? I mean, we're living in a state that actually has thought through these issues. Um, so I, I do get the, 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 uh, the information notices from HICAP um, that you can go on their blog and you, you get uh, emails and updates. Um, and you get updates on the insurance industry. And so you will know that which insurance carrier is, 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 is one that's stable, mm -hmm. where clients have good experiences, um, which insurance carrier is not. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, the Department of Healthcare Services is able to give you that information. Not only that, um, they have a, 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 a running tab on how many beds are available in your county. So in Solano County, we have, 200, um, we have 80, uh, 883 beds. Mm. We have a, a daily rate of 263 per bed per day. Um, so that's um, about $90,000 per year. And we know we have an 84% occupancy rate right now. So beds are available so in skilled nursing facilities. And, and so the, the Department of Healthcare Services has, um, uh, can, can give you access to services for in-home support, can give you access for health home, can give you access to home nursing support, um, th those Services are all available. They will cost you, right? Medicare doesn't pay for services unless you're discharged and then only for 100 days after you're discharged from the hospital. So that's not, uh, not an option for long-term care. And Medicaid only pays if you have uh, spent all your money, mm -hmm. right? Um, so HICAP I can, can fill you in about Medicare, Medicaid, Medicaid. maybe even with Social Security and the services that are available that you can purchase with those monies. Yeah, and then they specialize in the donut hole. Which yes. Is, <laughs> well, we don't need to get into that right now. <laughs> it just makes me hungry. Um, so um, another thing that, that I was hoping we could talk about because um, we're closing in on the um, last few minutes of the show is um, one, of, one of the things we're seeing um, at least I see in my profession, is that a lot of nonprofits and not-for-profits and social service organizations are struggling with their budgets. And there's, there's been dialogue for many years, and even more so now, about how can you make um, the administrative support services for CBOs more affordable and maybe you could talk a little sure. bit about that. Yeah, I just said that you can buy all these services, right? Well, who's providing the services? The services are provided by organizations that are not for profit. So there are very large organizations like Kaiser Permanente is a not for profit organization, very stable. And then there are health home organizations that are not as stable. And what happened in the last three years since 2015 with the Affordable Care Act is an increase in non-compliance with the law because the law got very complicated all of a sudden. So imagine you have a 15-person health home agency, you've been doing your work and suddenly the amount of legislation that, uh, that regulates your work has tripled which is a good thing because for Californians, we uh, now have very good services. So everybody raised the bar. But what happens to organizations if they are trying to raise the bar, but they can't? So um, my idea working with organizations who are tr struggling to keep up with new regulations, and that's uh, right now because we are in the rollout of the Affordable Care Act, 
there's a regulation coming out every second month. So it's very fluid um, and uh, the regulations change all the time. So I'm working with organizations to band together and, um, uh, and have a hub, an administrative hub, where all the administrative overhead is shared. And um, the California Association of Nonprofits calls it the pro overhead project. So we, what we need to do <coughs> as citizens, we need to work with organizations that are nonprofit, but also make sure that we support an effort that gives the administrative burden to the not-for-profits, mm -hmm. gives enough money to the not-for-profits, but then mm -hmm. also distributes this administrative burden across a bunch, a consortium of not-for-profits, mm -hmm. rather than saddling every single not-for-profits on its own. Yeah, so instead of having to have a bookkeeper, an accountant, um, somebody to do the paperwork, whatever, for each individual non nonprofit or CBO, they could go to a central place, and what'd you call it again? A CBO administrative hub. The administrative hub, and have fee for services that would be maybe one third of what it would cost them normally yep. to do that. And you would have licensed CPAs. Um, Qualified people. Yeah, you would have licensed attorneys. You would have licensed certified financial planners. Folks who are held accountable by their licensure. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they make mistakes, the licensure will t be taken away. So they're very acutely aware that mm -hmm. they cannot make mistakes and that they have to be up to date with the information that they impart to the not-for-profit organizations. And the not-for-profit organizations just don't have the money to pay for somebody who is clocking in as a CPA at $120 per hour. That's not possible. So um, that's probably a topic for a whole show that we can do the next time. Cool. Because we're out of time now. But I really appreciate you being here today. And your wealth of information and your contact information is um, broadcast on our screen for our um, viewers that may want to contact you if they have any questions. And um, with that, we're out of time. And uh, we'll have you back again sometime. And really, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. All right. With that, that's all the time we have for today. Um, our show airs at 6 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays at um, Comcast Channel 27. AT&T Uverse 99 and streaming live video at vcat.tv. Come see us again next time.